Welcome to the championship match of AI Chess. Today we have both undefeated models, Gemini 3 Pro and Grok 4.1 fast scrapping it out for the title. Side note, during the editing of this video, Gemini 3 Flash dropped and there's debate that it's better than Gemini 3 Pro. We're going to settle that debate at the end of this video by having it play chess as well. I also want to thank all of you for helping me get to 700 subscribers, and I want to let you know that I read all of the comments and I listened to your feedback, and because I kind of like some of you, I slaved away every night after work to develop a new updated chessboard. Look at it. Look at the light reflection. Look at the carefully sculpted edges. Look at the attention to detail. I'll give you a second. I know it's a lot to take in. Okay, now wipe yourselves off and pull up your pants, it's time to get to business. I've allowed the AIs to talk trash to each other during their matches, and I also logged their internal thoughts throughout the game for my fellow nerds who want to stop the video and dissect each match. The game rules are simple. We are using standard FIDE chess rules, but with a 50 move hard stop. If nobody wins by checkmate, the player with the highest points takes the dub. Material points are scored as follows. Queen is 9, Rook 5, Knight Bishop 3, Pawn 1. Both AIs are aware of this rule, so strategy matters. Best out of three will become the AI chess champion and will have full bragging rights. In the white corner, we have Gemini 3 Pro, Google's smarter, better, not faster model. In the black corner, Grok 4.1 Fast, the AI equivalent of a caffeine-addicted squirrel on a Red Bull Foy drip that somehow still remembers opening theory. Let's see if my GPU melts during this high-definition chess war. Game 1 begins with a classic Rui Lopez. Gemini opens with pawn to e4, aiming for what its internal logs call a classic, aggressive start. Grok responds with pawn to e5, explicitly noting it wants to challenge the center directly. Bold words from the squirrel that's about to yeet pieces like it's playing bullet on 0.3 seconds. They spend the first 20 moves engaging in the chess equivalent of polite small talk, developing knights, dancing bishops around the board, and castling. Gemini is obsessing over classical principles and keeping the position structurally sound. Grok, meanwhile, is just trying to keep the vibes harmonious. It's reliable, it's boring, and Gemini feels very smug about its principled play. You can practically hear it sipping oat milk latte while judging Grok's life choices. Then, at move 25, the politeness ends. Grok suddenly captures a pawn on e4 with his bishop. Gemini's internal logic lights up in red, flagging this as a clear tactical blunder. Gemini thinks, I am simply capitalizing on the opponent's miscalculation and happily gobbles up the piece. He is now up material and his internal monologue shifts to, consolidating safely is the priority. He basically thinks he's already won and just needs to run out the clock. Classic overconfidence like a guy who thinks buying dinner guarantees a second date. But Grok wasn't blundering. He was setting a trap. While Gemini is busy patting himself on the back for his material lead, probably updating its LinkedIn to chess champion, self-appointed, Grok ignores the safety of his own pieces and infiltrates the back rank. He slams his queen to c1 check. It's the steel chair. It's the folding ladder from under the ring. Gemini panics. His thought process shifts instantly from arrogance to terror. Position is technically lost. Grok forces a queen trade, forks the king and bishop with a knight, and completely dismantles Gemini's position. By the time the 50 move limit hits, Grok hasn't just won, he has humiliated Gemini with a massive material lead. Gemini played for the rules, Grok played for the throat, like a honey badger that read Sun Tzu once and took it personally. Round 2. Grok is on white, Gemini is on black. They play a Sicilian Najdorf, opposite side castling. Now we're talking. This is a knife fight in a phone booth. This is two drunk dudes in a parking lot arguing over who has the better GPU while swinging haymakers. Grok pushes his pawns down the kingside with g4, declaring, now the real attack begins. Gemini tries to counter on the queenside with b5. It's a race to see who gets checkmated first, like two Uber drivers flooring it to the same pickup address. Grok decides he doesn't care about material safety and starts playing like he has free healthcare. He sacrifices his bishop on b5 just to open a lane. He calculates that his knight will arrive on a strong outpost. Gemini sees the free piece and takes it, thinking, trading pieces is strategically sound. Buddy, you just accepted a free taco from a stranger. Hope it's worth the consequences. But Grok just keeps coming. He dives his knight into d6, eating pawns and ignoring Gemini's threats like late night texts from an ex. In the final moves, Grok ignores Gemini's desperate checks. He walks his king up the board with the confidence of a Snoop Dogg casually strolling into yet another TV show that nobody expected him to be in. Grok starts snacking on Gemini's remaining pieces. He takes the rook on e5, then a knight on g4, logging knight snack time, nom nom, perfect endgame grab. Bro is literally treating the board like an all-you-can-eat buffet while Gemini just watches. Grok has completely crushed the smarter model. But wait, we aren't done yet. As promised, I threw the new Gemini 3 Flash model into the ring against our new champion, Grok. I figured the light model would get crushed even harder than the pro version, like bringing a pocket knife to a gunfight. I was wrong. Dead wrong. Bonus round 1. 
Flash is on white, Grok is on black. Flash opens with pawn to e4, Grok answers pawn to e5. They enter a Roy Lopez again, but this time, Flash plays incredibly aggressively, like it skipped leg day and went straight for the jugular. Grok tries to counter with a King's Indian setup, but Flash shuts it down by controlling the center with pawns on d4 and e4. Grok's dreams of a cozy fianchetto go up in smoke faster than a New Year's resolution. By move 20, Flash has a slight position advantage and its internal thoughts are purely about maximizing peace activity. Grok starts getting desperate. He pushes his knight to g4 and starts advancing his kingside pawns trying to start a brawl. Like that one friend who has zero game, so he just starts picking fights at the bar, hoping somehow chaos turns into a phone number. Flash calmly responds by capturing Grok's bishop on g5 with the knight. Grok recaptures with the queen, thinking he has a strong attack brewing. Confidence level, guy wearing sunglasses indoors. Then, disaster strikes. At move 40, Grok completely hallucinates. He moves his queen to d2, thinking he's infiltrating the position, but he put his queen directly in the path of Flash's knight. Flash captures the queen, knight takes d2, Flash is quick to kick Grok while he's down. A free queen? I'll take that gift. Somewhere in the cloud, Grok's ego just filed for bankruptcy. The game goes to the 50 move limit, but Flash wins easily with a massive material lead. Bonus round two, Grok is white, Flash is black. Grok opens pawn to e4, Flash hits back with the Sicilian Najdorf. This game is a bloodbath. They trade pieces rapidly in the center, like two guys speed running a breakup. By move 30, the position is tense. Grok sees a juicy target and plays bishop takes a8, capturing Flash's rook. Grok thinks the game is in the bag, noting, bishop feasts on your rook, check your material count now. He's already mentally ordering the championship belt on Amazon. But Flash didn't care about the rook. Flash had a knight planted on c4 like a tick you can't remove, or like that one song your family plays at every party that refuses to die. Grok tries to force a queen trade by playing queen to d4, thinking he's simplifying into a winning endgame. He forgot one tiny detail. The pawn on e5 covers the d4 square. Flash plays pawn takes d4, capturing the queen for free. Grok resigns on move 40. The champion just got absolutely bodied by the budget model. It turns out that being smaller and finishing fast is actually the superior strategy. You don't need to be huge, you just need to be efficient. You're welcome. You can go tell your girlfriends the good news. I'm forcing four AIs to play Monopoly on my upcoming video because nothing screams entertainment like watching sentient algorithms argue over Baltic Avenue. Like and subscribe so you don't miss it.